one tooth buried in Indian soil for 4,600 years. Inside it, a genetic code that answered a question no one thought could be solved. Who built India's first cities? For 100 years, historians had one answer. The DNA said something else entirely. And what it revealed didn't just rewrite textbooks, it ignited a controversy that's still burning today. This is the story of how one woman's DNA became the most debated evidence in South Asian history. 5,000 years ago, something extraordinary existed in what's now India and Pakistan. Cities. Massive cities. Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Dolavira. Streets laid in perfect grids, underground drainage systems, standardised weights for trade, public baths the size of swimming pools. This was the Indus Valley civilization. At its peak, five million people. It was as advanced as ancient Egypt, as vast as Mesopotamia. But here's what makes it different. No pyramids, no palaces, no massive temples, no writing we can read. 400 symbols, zero translations, no kings carved into stone. And by 1900, BCE, gone, cities abandoned, rivers dried, population scattered. For a century, archaeologists asked, who were these people and where did they come from? The answer was about to emerge from a single tooth. 2012, Rakigari, India, a burial site, 4,600 years old. Archaeologists uncovered a skeleton, a woman, mid-30s, buried with care. Most ancient DNA degrades in centuries. Heat, moisture, bacteria, time destroys everything. But teeth are different. Enamel is the hardest substance in the human body. It seals DNA inside, like a time capsule. 2015, one tooth extracted, shipped to three labs, India, South Korea, Harvard. Three years of filtering contamination, isolating fragments, reconstructing sequences. And in 2018, a signal, clear, complete, undeniable. The first genome from the Indus Valley civilization. For the first time in 4,600 years, she could tell her story. And what she revealed would change everything. Scientists ran her DNA against hundreds of populations, ancient, modern, global, looking for one thing, proof that outsiders built the cities. Then one sequence appeared on the screen. And the century-old theory collapsed. The question they needed to answer, were the Indus Valley cities built by migrants from Central Asia? That was the dominant theory. The Aryan migration hypothesis. Outsiders from the steppes, riding in, building cities. If true, her DNA should show ancestry from there. It didn't. Zero step ancestry. Instead, her ancestors had lived in South Asia for thousands of years before the cities were built. A mix of ancient hunter-gatherers who'd inhabited India for 50,000 plus years. And early farmers from the Iranian plateau who'd arrived around 7,000 BCE. The cities weren't built by outsiders. They were built by people whose roots ran deep into South Asian soil. The Indus Valley Civilization was indigenous. Before we go deeper, if you're here for history rewritten by evidence, subscribe now. We're decoding the past, one genome at a time. And the next discovery drops Thursday. So if they built the cities, why did they disappear? Around 1900 BCE, the monsoons weakened. Rivers that fed the cities began to dry. The Gagahakra, once a lifeline, became a trickle. Crops failed, trade collapsed, and the cities emptied. Not destroyed, not conquered, just abandoned. But the people didn't vanish. They moved, east to the Ganges plains, south into peninsular India, into villages, into new lives, and their DNA, it survived. Millions of people across South Asia today carry genetic echoes of the Indus Valley. The civilization fell, the people didn't. But here's where the story gets complicated. Around 1500 BCE, 
500 years after the cities emptied, a new wave of migrations arrived from the Central Asian steppes, groups carrying different DNA, different languages. They didn't conquer an empire. There was no empire left to conquer. They mingled with the descendants of the Indus people in villages, in settlements, over generations. Today, many South Asians carry a mix, Indus Valley Ancestry, Steppe Ancestry, Hunter-Gatherer Ancestry, not one origin, layers. The Indus cities were indigenous. The later mixing was real. Both can be true. And this is where science met politics. When the Rakigari genome was published in 2018, it didn't just make headlines, it sparked fury. Why? Because for a century, the Aryan migration theory had been weaponized, used to justify caste systems, used to claim superiority, used to divide. Some groups wanted the DNA to prove indigenous origins. And it did, for the cities. Others feared it would erase later migrations. But it didn't. The genome showed both. The lead archaeologist, Vasant Shinde, was praised and attacked alike. Accused of bias for letting the DNA speak for itself. One tooth became a battlefield. Here's what we still don't know. We can't read their writing. 400 symbols. Zero translations. We've sequenced one genome. One woman. One city. What happens when we sequence DNA from Mohenjo-Daro? From Harappa? From Lothal? Future excavations are planned for those sites. The next genome could confirm this story, or flip it completely. Because in ancient DNA research, every discovery is temporary, until the next one. One tooth, 4,600 years old. It couldn't tell us everything. It couldn't decode their script. It couldn't explain why they built cities without kings. But it answered the question that mattered most. Where did they come from? The answer? They didn't come from anywhere. They were already there. For thousands of years before the first brick was laid. The Indus Valley civilization wasn't built by outsiders. It was built by South Asia's own people. And their DNA is still here. In the soil. In the ruins in millions of people living today. History isn't written in stone, it's written in code, and we've only just started reading it. Next Thursday, we're investigating another genome that shouldn't exist. DNA from the Americas that traces back 20,000 years before humans were supposed to be there. Subscribe now. The evidence is waiting.